Anyway, I said, Chris, is there anything you want me to say? Then I introduced you. He said, yeah, say D David Grisman rules. <laughs> Ryan Holiday. Did anybody see Ryan's show yesterday? They're just playing around, sitting down, picking a few tunes together. That was really cool, pretty cool. Uh, Chris has a couple albums out, and he's working on a couple more uh, with Van. He's got a couple solo CDs. One is called Stealing Second, and the other one's called Leading Off. And um, our next, the next guy, uh, old Dave, um, Dog Dave. Um, more albums than I can shake a stick at, and he's done so much for the world of music with his acoustic disc label. He does a lot for world music and the world of bluegrass, and I think you're really in for a treat, uh, real master of the mandolin. I'm really proud to be here today to be able to say welcome David Grisman and Chris Healy. <laughs>
to, to hear Mark play it on the fiddle. And, uh, uh, that was a good number. <laughs> I remember it. It's an A. That's an A modal.
of us learn to want to play the mandolin. And, uh, well, I, I don't know, I fell in love with bluegrass music, and then I met a guy named Ralph Rinsler and heard him play the mandolin, and that's what made me want to play the mandolin. Um, man, I'm loud. Well... <laughs> When I was um, when I was two years old, we started going to a pizza place in California, and there was a bluegrass a bluegrass well sort That's of. That's when a, I was seventeen. <laughs> and uh, it was just this this pizza place in Carlsbad. They had a bluegrass band or sort of a bluegrass band. They, they played a lot of different stuff, but mostly bluegrass. And that was every every Saturday night. And and the the leader of the band was a mandolin player, and I just fell in love with the sound. Was sort of little like me, and and uh, I, I just dug it. It was a serious thing. I, I had to beg my parents to let me start from when I was two. They finally gave in when I was five. <laughs> as low as possible. Right without, here too. Yes. Without buzzing. Uh, when I first got into bluegrass and you know, then like it was like a, kind of a badge of whoever had the highest a, action you know because you were trying to be as loud as possible and higher action will give you a little more volume but there's there's a point of diminishing returns and uh, you know as soon as you try and learn uh, more difficult things to play it, it just uh, I mean Jethro Burns his approach was Comfort over over sound, and I always wanted the sound over that. Thing. But somewhere, there's a compromise there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was was sort of afraid. I was sort of embarrassed. Oh, I love my action, and then I, I played Dave's, and I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right there. So. David, you want to tell us about your latest album? Oh uh, well, my latest one is. Uh, as an album of jazz standards, actually, with Martin Taylor, the great uh, yeah. Scottish uh, jazz guitar player. It's called I'm Beginning to See the Light. And then there's another one called the Bluegrass Mandolin Extravaganza. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie, it was Ronnie McCurry's idea, and uh, it, uh, he wanted to get... Uh, all the remaining kind of pioneers of bluegrass mandolin playing together. And it was hard narrowing it down, you know, but we figured it was a mandolin record. Eight is enough. <laughs> so uh, we got Bobby Osborne and Jesse McReynolds and uh, Buck White and Frank Wakefield yeah. and Woo! Sam Bush and Ricky Skaggs and Ronnie and myself, of course. We were the producers. We had to be there. <laughs> and it's a double CD. It's got solos, duets, trios, and a session with all eight guys. And it's all accompanied just with a, one guitar played by Del McCurry. And, and if you like bluegrass man blues playing, <laughs> yeah, that's all there is on that record. <laughs> No, we're okay. finally going to get off the baseball theme. I, I figure maybe if I get off the baseball theme, the Cubs will win a World Series. <laughs> hey, well, maybe maybe they could beat the Red Sox in the World Series. We'll compromise. I'm, I'm working on... Uh, we just got done with a, a new Nickel Creek album. We just got done tracking that. And... Um, and that should be out in the spring sometime on Sugar Hill. And I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm sort of putting the, the finishing touches uh, as far as compositions and stuff on, on a new uh, mandolin project that uh, should be pretty weird. But it'll be fun. Oh, sorry. Hey, Chris, an old friend. Like Dave and Enrique, where do you get your shirts from? <laughs> 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 Another one, I don't, I don't know. Maybe not, because he stopped playing. But he's still doing real well. Yeah. Ah. 
This is an instrument you want to play. I could try it. I don't really do mandolin. I could play mandola. We can go the low end. That way we can play something A still. Even though we're actually not A. Yes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, you can. Where are we at? Let's see. Where are you at? Let's see. <laughs> I guess in the early uh, first 20 years of this century, the mandolin was very popular, and uh, the Gibson Company primarily uh, was the largest producer of mandolins. And, uh, they kind of just had a new design that was more like a man, a violin, and that had a arched top and back, and uh, they um, developed a whole family of mandolin instruments. That, Mandolin, as you probably know, is tuned like a violin uh, in fifths, other than the fact that it has double strings to tune in unison. And they make tuning a mandolin kind of an ongoing nightmare. <laughs> but uh, the same thing holds true for the mandolo, which corresponds to the viola. And that's down a fifth from a violin or a mandolin. And then the mando cello, which is tuned like a cello. Sounds like one of Bob's cello skills. I don't know what that one <laughs> That is the lowest sound I ever heard. First mando cello around 1963 or four. I thought I would be the only person I knew who played mando cello. Certainly, I was for a long time. This is the second one I've ever played. In. Is that your mando cello? It's his. <laughs> oh.
Chris Real. the Tone Poems CD. Yeah. Any possibility you've there's got any more there's collaborations two. coming up? And actually, there's a new it's a Tone Poems Volume 3, actually, that is it? recorded. Yeah. It's actually, uh, it's, uh, well, I'll tell you who's on it, and you probably guess what it's about. It's Mike Aldridge, Bob Brosman, and myself, playing all Dobros, Nationals, and uh, all the Rezophonic and slide acoustic guitar. Yeah, but... A lot of screaming garbage cans. <laughs> National mandolins and tenor guitars and stuff like that. But yes, that's coming out uh, January, next January. I hope. David. Yes. When did you first hear of Chris and vice versa, Chris? When did you first hear of David? Well, I I, been, I ran into Chris, I believe, at the Gra Grass Valley uh, Bluegrass Festival. I, I I think I just uh, saw this big crowd or something, you know. I I, I heard him play. He was just uh, hanging out playing, and I was hanging out watching him <laughs> play all these Sam Bush licks at the age of nine. <laughs> Pretty impressive. <laughs> I remember Great. Yeah. the first thing the first thing you said to me was was did I know anything of the minor key? Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I'll remember that forever. Oh. <laughs> A lot of my tunes are in minor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you just uh, you know every major has a relative minor. Exactly. You, know? you gotta use it. That's just a bass note it. away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I really enjoyed stuff to do with uh, Stefan Capelli. And I was wondering if you guys could just around. Yeah, we could probably do that. Yeah. We'll do that in the uh, yeah. shirt. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, no, it's not already play the melody. <laughs> I don't really know the Torah thing. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Why, it'll be cool. <laughs> Thank you. 
David, my understanding of dog music is that it's uh, like a blend between bluegrass and jazz. How would you define it? And did you start that up? Well, I did define it. It's did dog it? music. <laughs> look at it as like uh, all that stuff rolled into one. I try to, uh, I write tunes and I try to write them in different styles. And then because these instruments are not usually associated with a lot of these styles, it adds a, you know, I'm also trying to arrange pieces for mandolin and flute and acoustic instruments. So it comes out a certain way. Uh, But I like all kinds of music. I don't, you know, I try to get what I want out of like bluegrass uh, and do tunes written that way in a certain way and tunes that have a Latin influence I try to do them in an authentic Latin way you seem to like invent Same dog with, music do you, do you think well, that you well, are I write tunes I write tunes you know there's nothing un- <laughs> there's nothing new under the sun we, when I started my band people kept saying what do you call this you know so I I have this n- nickname, Dog, that Jerry Garcia gave me, so I figured I'll call it Dog. And I figured that'd be the end of it. Nobody would ever, you know, they'd, they'd know what it was. And now, I've been answering that question, you know, what is dog music for 23 years now? Well, they have to ask you, you've got albums like Dog and Nova. And right. Song, you well, know, it's a good, if you write instrumentals, it's, good, it's a good way of naming instrumentals. I'm telling you, that's the hardest part, yeah. is naming them. Yeah, I used to have a list of tunes, tune in A, tune in G. Play Grateful Dog. Okay, yeah, we should get... Uh, yeah, this is Enrique Correa. He plays... Quest for something Latin, so this is a tune actually I first heard Jesse McReynolds play this yeah. tune. And, uh, and and actually Jesse, Jim and Jesse have experimented with a lot of Latin uh, rhythms in their music. Um, so this is uh, called El Cumbanchero, kind of up tempo. One of the faster ones. Huh? It is one of yeah. the faster tunes. I'll try. I hope we ever play this one.
Do you want a Christmas tune? Chris, how old are you? 18. Wow. Uh, in blue gas? You aren't really in blue gas. Uh, I, I mean, I, I just listen. The question is, like, uh, influences. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I just listen to everything. I, I sort of, you know, try never to put anything in a category uh, as much as possible. I mean, you know, David obviously is one of my, one of my big influences. Um, all mandolin players. Uh, I really, I really like a guy named John Reichman. He's a, a big, a big tone monster from the Bay Area. Now he lives in Canada. Um, my teacher John Moore was sort of a big, big influence on me. Uh, just every mandolin player, you know, that's out there, it has some way, I think, to, to influence everybody. I think, I think everybody has a unique musical, uh, you know, stance from where they're coming. And, uh, and not just mandolin players, you know, I, I, you can learn, you can learn stuff from anybody. So those are my influences. I got to, yeah, once. He was about to fall asleep. <laughs> but I, I played a little bit, yeah. But but he was he was showing me a tune that he wrote. He was that was that was definitely an incredible experience. Kind of frightening, but uh, but definitely incredible. That was the year that he died. Actually. Yeah. Uh, Sure. Uh, we could. Uh, <laughs> Show them Yeah, you could, you could probably play. He's got good ears. This is a, a request for a tune that, uh, from, uh, or something from a uh, CD called Songs of Our Fathers, traditional Jewish music that I did with Andy Staffman a few years ago. This is a beautiful uh, melody in A minor called Shalom Aleichem, very simple, beautiful piece. So we'll try and play that for you a little bit.
playing in the near future where people might be able to catch you and also hoping that maybe um, you could get together and do something of Christmas before yeah, we have to. Yeah, I'm Well, I'm, a, I'm not exactly sure. If, I mean, next weekend we're in Santa Cruz, California, but if you're on the internet, check out dognet.com and yeah. schedule there. Yeah, D-A-W-G, of course. And, uh, Chris probably has a website. Right? Yeah, uh, the band has a website actually. It's um, uh, what is it? It's w, I think it's slash uh, Nickel Creek slash. So I'm sure you'll all be going there right when you get home. No, it, I'm sure uh, you can search. You know, like a, yeah, we've got we've actually got slips that have it on there at our table. But, uh, there you go. Uh, I don't. I, I would say you know never, never frustrate yourself. I think is a big music is all about. That's easy, Rand to say. <laughs> uh, well, I just I just say <clears throat> I mean the key is to have fun while you're doing it because I mean music is all about fun and that's you know it's it's not about although it is about progressing it's not about how good can I get today dang it. You know, it's it's about you know how much fun can I have playing this instrument, and 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 can I improve? You know, and and, and you've got to you've got to go in I think with that mindset, and um, and I mean you want to be loose is another thing. I mean I I always tell people you just got to be loose. So, some very general tips, but. <laughs> I think it's on the wrist. The wrist. You have to have a loose wrist. I think. Yeah. Turn a little sort of a mystery, I think. Yeah. You just, you just sort of go back and forth real fast. Yeah. <laughs> Try to make it musical. It's yeah. Not, it's, not, it's not really in, in the metric. Not uh, regular. It's regular. Well, the makers of this died a long time ago, I presume. <laughs> this was a, this is a Gibson F5 from 1922 with the Lloyd Moore signature on it uh, inside. The Which is a very was good the, signature to have on was, the inside. Uh, it, adds, it adds a lot of uh, tone and <laughs> desirability. Yes. <laughs> I've got a little printing press and <laughs> back there. Uh, Can I talk to you about that after the morning? <laughs> uh, it's an old Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, this is made by a guy named Lynn Dudenbostel from uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. He just started, and he's um, I just I think they're incredible. Can you um, beat on them? Oh, that's right, you do. I do. Yes, I I do the little thing. You wouldn't have that to a vintage Gibson. No. Like, for instance, if Dave gave me his mandolin, Here. <laughs> I wouldn't be on it. Yeah. <laughs> 